Howdy there once again, YouTube. This is Ben Ferriolo, and I am back once again. So, there hasn't been too much lately, but I just wanted to talk about one thing real quick. I noticed that uh, every morning when I wake up, right away, right when I wake up, I go to the computer and check Yellowstone, Long Valley, and other seismographs, and then the Earthquake website. Anything interesting, I input on the seismic analysis programs that I use. I'm still learning a lot, guys. Still have a lot to learn, but I have learned a lot. I'm loving this program waves and i'll talk about this in a little bit you can tell that doesn't really look like an earthquake i'm not saying it's a harmonic tremor like people all of a sudden say there's multiple different types of tremor out there you can see a blatant earthquake right here but we'll talk about this in just a little bit here we are at is this thing on dot org now i'm gonna go to ylt real quick a little thumb it seems that the earthquake swarm you can see it right here right here right here and right here there to me i saw about 15 microquakes when i went into the program called waves i saw about 15 microquakes and those 15 microquakes that i saw probably maxed out around magnitude 1.5 1.8 or so um but i don't think they've reported it yet i don't know why but the 15 earthquakes that i uh saw on there had pretty much they pretty much all had distinct p waves and S waves. So they should have been able to be located. I'm not really good at locating earthquakes myself, but according to the P wave showing first on YLT, YLT is the seismic monitor uh, for this swarm that showed the quickest P arrival time, which means that it most likely occurred right around the area where that July 5th, 2018 event happened that I talk about a lot. So it shows on YLT right here. Let's go back. It also shows on many other seismographs around the area, but I'm going to choose three for today. It shows on H17A, which is a, it says SHZ, but that's just filtered. It's actually a broadband. This is actually a broadband station, so it's actually BHZ. The reason why it says SHZ is because this has been filtered. Um, I am told around high pass 1 hertz, and this is from Network TA. And now let's go to YML. Mary Lake, you can see that it showed here, here, and here as well. But let's not stop there. You shouldn't just stop there when you're trying to locate events. Let's pull up YLT, H17A, and Mary Lake, YML, on Boom, on Swarm. Here we have YLT. Wow, that looks very similar, doesn't it? Let me click this. Just want to have you guys notice something. You see how this looks so similar? Look at that. YLT, YLT. So this is just an image, right? Let me move this up a little bit so you can see a little better. So this is just an image I pasted here just to look at it better, right? Nope, this program is called Swarm. And look what we can do. We can view the waveforms as much as we want. Let's zoom in. Let's check out the frequencies. This had a mid-range frequency. A lot of these events today in this swarm had about a mid-range frequency, about 10 to 15 hertz peaking at looks like peaking about 20 hertz so it's not really technically a high frequency event it's more of a mid to high range frequency event and you can see right down here these are electronic issues you can blatant blatantly tell let's go to the waveforms real quick oh yeah those are electronic issues i don't know what type of electronic issues don't know what was going on there but definitely is and here's h17a bhc ta and you can see it here as well and here is another section of the swarm. Looks like four distinct events, I'm pretty sure. And another event right here, which I am very confused about. To me, it looked like surface noise at first because of how it slowly approaches and then slowly fades away. But it does show on surrounding seismographs. And here is YML, E-H-G-W-Y, right here. All right. Now I want to real quick go to... So they have not updated this at all. They have not reported any of the earthquakes that happened in this swarm at all. It happened from about 7.50 UTC to about 8.33 UTC. And I'm pretty sure it occurred right in this area, which is actually where the July 5th, 2018 event occurred. That very spastic, spasmodic event that I like to call it. Go visit my other videos if you haven't seen it. So I did, I'm about to send an email to University of Utah to ask them why it's taken so long to report these earthquakes. I'm not mad at them or anything, but you know, it'd be cool for them to report them. Because I found about 15 different events. And here we are at Waves. Here is YLT on the top. 
H17A, BHZ in the middle, which is broadband vertical, and YML, EHZ, which is short period vertical at the bottom right here. All right, first, I want to start with something. At 802, from about, let's use YLT, from about 802, 23 seconds to 802, 29 seconds or so, there's this very, very strange event, and it does look like it carries a low frequency. And you can tell it was part of the same event, most likely occurring in the same area. Because notice right here, notice this is an earthquake part of the swarm that I'm talking about today. Notice it showed first on YLT, H178 showed second, YML it showed third. So kind of at an angle like this. This shows that it probably occurred most likely near YLT, the closest seismograph most likely to this event. But what is this tremor? So I'm not exactly sure what this is. I do not want to say harmonic tremor, guys, but its characteristics is very similar. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it is. There actually are many different types of tremor, and guess what? There is such a thing called hydrothermal tremor. Did you know that? To me, this earthquake swarm seems to have been caused by hydrothermal fluids. That is my opinion. I could be completely wrong, but I doubt it was tectonic forces alone. Something underground, some type of fluid, I'm, I believe some type of aqueous fluid, which is water, some type of hydrothermal energy just trying to push its way to the surface. But sadly, something that I would have looked at if I had access to it was the amount of hydrothermal eruptions today in near Little West Thumb. Because they do have some geysers down there near Little West Thumb. And so I'm hoping to try to find out today's activity down there and see if I can correlate it with this event. So if there was a large increase in hydrothermal activity during this swarm, then it could have been most likely caused by hydrothermal fluids. Because did you know that hydrothermal injection, I'm not talking about magma intrusion, which is also called magma injection, but hydrothermal injection is a possibility too. Yeah, it can occur, but guess what it's caused by? Magma. So really, it all draws down to magma. Magma always does everything. Dear God, our whole planet's made it. You go deep enough in our planet, it's all magma. Everything. The whole outer core is just one big ball of magma. So let's zoom out a little bit. Let's remove these P arrivals. Let's delete all arrivals. Yes. All right. Let's zoom out just a little bit. So that, that was that event right there that I was just talking about. Very interesting. Very, very interesting event. Tr I'm going to call it a tremor because I don't know exactly what type of tremor. But you can tell there are multiple earthquakes. Let's see. where. Let's see. That's eight. Let's zoom out just a little bit more. Yeah, let's zoom back in. Okay, so it occurred from 750 to 833. So it's 802, 803, 804, 805. So it started right about here. Let's go check out these earthquakes real quick. Let's zoom in. You can tell there are three separate events that do show on the surrounding seismographs. So these are not surface noise, guys. See, this is called cross-correlating, and it's very, very easy. Let's say you see some activity, even on a borehole. Yes, surface interference is possible on a borehole. You guys can call me crazy if you want, but I have proven it myself multiple, multiple times in my own personal experience, and I can do a whole video on that if you'd like me to. But this is how you do it. Let's say you see something on Maple Creek's seismograph ymc right and you want to see okay that looks interesting let's go see if it's surface activity go find two other seismographs near it which if you're trying to find something from ymc i would say probably use yhh holmes hill and ypm or you could use the ones on uh west of that and do ydc or yhb and then what you do is you can download waves and it's very easy actually and download the dot second and plus you guys can email me if you need any seismic data if you need any seismic data that has to do with this swarm or you want me to tell you how to work the program or whatever just go ahead and shoot me an email i'll leave my email address in the description box below i'm also creating a website showing people how to do this stuff too but it's going to be a while to that website's up and running but you could tell let's see let's go backwards just a little bit now, a P wave usually is the first wiggle that is bigger than the other wiggles. That's a very simple way of putting it. So let's say the P wave is right about there. Let's mark that as P wave. P wave for this one, definitely right about there. Now, something that's a little more tricky is the P wave for YML. This might be a little tricky. So that's an earthquake, that's an earthquake. But right here, I really don't know where the P wave is on this one. It's so hard because it's really not showing up very well. I'm going to say right about there. So let's mark that. Every single time you do it, you can tell that YLT was closer to this event than any other seismograph. 
and there's another P wave right there and right there. Everything always has a P wave. It is called a primary wave. And also, I believe it's called the compression wave, the S wave, or the secondary wave. For example, let me try to find an S wave for you real quick. And if you guys don't believe anything I'm talking about, just do some research for yourself, really. I tell people to, you know, you know, you can watch my videos, listen to them if you want. But if you really want to learn anything, you need to do research on your own. Then just listen to people and what they have to say. So let's say the P wave's right about there. I'm pretty sure the S wave starts increasing right about here. Let's mark that as S wave. And let's mark this as P wave. At about 0.48 seconds. About half a second. So a lot of these earthquakes were locatable. They were, guys. They were. Because they did not just show on YML, YLT, and h 178 There were other seismographs that showed as well. But these are the ones that I picked. Now let me zoom in a little bit. So you can tell these were actual earthquake events, guys. This is how you cross-correlate things. If you see uh, surface noise, just add a seismograph and add two neighboring seismographs and do what I'm doing here. And notice the distance factor. The farther away from the swarm you get, the longer it takes for the P wave to arrive and the S wave as well. That is how people locate earthquakes. They judge the distance. Not the distance, I'm sorry. The time difference between the P and S wave arrivals. So here, boom. Right there, that's right where the P wave starts. And boom, right there, that's where the P wave starts. And of course, YML is making it difficult again, but it looks like the change occurs right about there. And P wave. Okay, so the next large spike after the P wave is the S wave. I believe it starts right there. And then let's do, the, then it starts right there, S wave. Oh, you know what? I think I got it wrong. There's the S wave. Let's see. Yeah, due to the distance factor. Yep, that makes more sense. And then the S wave for this, I'm going to guess, is probably right about here. See, I'm not too good at this, guys. I really have a lot to learn still. I'm really not good at locating earthquakes and P and S waves. But I can identify a P wave. That is easier to identify. The S wave, the shear wave, is actually pretty difficult to identify. At least for me. Someday it might be easy as cake. But right now, that's a little more difficult. But I just wanted to show you as an example the distance factor. So let me zoom out just a little bit. Yeah, we had multiple earthquakes during this event, guys. So I do hope they do report it. And let me show you the email real quick because I did email them. I'm just going to read it real quick. I haven't sent it yet. Dear you of you, I have a quick question. I attached a few images and I'm wondering when you will report to the USGS the earthquakes that occurred between 750 to 8 UTC, 8 to 808 UTC, and 825 to 830 UTC August 21st, 2018. I was able to identify 15 possible locatable, locatable? Did I get that wrong? Relocatable, eatable. Is the word locatable a word? I'm pretty sure it is. Why is it? Huh, maybe it's not a word. <laughs> Locatable micro earthquakes with blatant P and S wave rivals on a minimum of three seismic instruments from about 750 UTC to blah, 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 750 UTC. Sorry guys, I just woke up a few hours ago to 833 UTC. Sadly, I'm not too good on judging depth or actual location down to the latitude longitude, but I do know the largest of these events was most likely a magnitude 1.0 to 1.8 or so. Remember, I'm still a beginner to all of this. This seems to be the same type of event which occurred in basically the same location on July 5th. It is my personally, personally, man, I just can't talk today, can I? Jeez. It is my personal theory. Today's minor swarm was caused by hydrothermal fluid being aggravated by possibly increased pressure or heat from below. I am actually fascinated by rapid succession spasmodic events, even if they only contain minor earthquakes. All I have is one... Oh, and I have one more question. Man, guys. <laughs> I know it is unlikely this is connected to an actual brief injection of magma, but please take a look at the image I attached called Tremor, which is this image right here of that Tremor that I showed you. Let me go back. It appears where it should if it were coming from underground, and the distance factor of each seismograph confirms this tremor, quote-unquote, was not surface interference. It seems to have lasted about 8 to 10 seconds, so what could it be? Possibly residents of the hydrothermal fluid itself? Has there been any reported increases in the output of the geysers near West Thumb? Would love to see if this was connected to heightened hydrothermal eruptions. 
These earthquakes all carry mid to high frequency arrivals. Any information as to your thoughts on the cause of this event and when they will be reported would be amazing. Thank you for your time. Monitors used for this, however other instruments detected this event well, YLTEHGWY, H17A, BHCTA, YML, EHEWY. That's the network code, that's the channel code, and that's the station code. I remember in my last two-part video, Amateur Seismology Basics, Misconceptions and Tools, I showed you how to understand seismograph codes, download seismic data, and review them in top-notch software such as Waves, or Swarm, and Jama Size too. Actually, I'm using Jama Size less and less now because I'm finding the program Swarm and Waves are giving me a lot more data and information than uh, just Jama Size. Jama Size is very limited. You can't even zoom in on the waveforms except for one minute per line. Here, you could zoom here. I want to show you an example real quick of how amazing this program is. Let me zoom in as much as I can. Oh, I can't zoom in anymore. Let me zoom out. See how you can zoom in? Let's zoom in. In, in. Spread out the waveforms. I can't zoom in anymore, can I? Oh, no. Let's... Whoa! I can! Whoa. 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 Whoa! Yeah. Off the charts. Apparently, Swarm is so cool, and so is Waves, you can zoom into the millisecond. Yes, guys, you can zoom into one millisecond. I just found out that, that the other day. I don't really know the purpose of zooming into one millisecond, but you can do it. I mean, that's just an example of how much you can zoom in. It is literally, I'm not joking. Let me go to this real quick. It is literally, if you use Swarm and know how to use it, it's just like these seismographs here. Just like them in every way, except these are constrained by pixels and it's an image. This is actual seismic data. It looks the same, but you can manipulate it, and you can look at it, and you can review it, and you can do waveform analysis, spectra analysis, or spectrogram analysis. Isn't that cool? For some reason, the particle motion does not work, and I actually don't even know what particle motion is. Maybe someday I'll figure that out, but for some reason, it never works. Well, guys, I thank you for your time. Oh, yeah, also, you can make everything look smaller. See that? Whoa! Look at that. You can manipulate it as much or as little as you want. Isn't that amazing? I would suggest people start using the program Swarm. Well, thank you guys for everything you do. And looks like Steamboat has not erupted again since, I think, what was it? Uh, July 20th or something like that? Well, thank you guys for all you do and all your support and everything. And I will be back soon. I am working very hard on my website. It'll probably be up in the next month or so. It'll be monitorsize.weebly.com. It has not been published yet, so if you go to that link, it's going to say it's not working, obviously. Um, I will publish it in the next month, but I just want to tell you guys about it now so you can bookmark that link or save that link just so that when I tell you it's, it's up and running, you can go there and check it out. And trust me, it's going to have some pretty cool information, guys, but it's always going to be an active development. There's, there are probably going to be things missing, some things I'm eventually going to add, and it'd be nice for you guys to let me know how I do. I'll still be doing YouTube videos, of course, but my website will allow me to put out more information and more data to the public than what I can do with the YouTube video. I mean, a 20-minute YouTube video takes me a while to record and edit and everything, so just typing an article is a lot simpler. Don't worry, though. I'll still be on YouTube. So tell me what you guys think, and please go check out Waves and Swarm, and uh, please don't forget to go check out my most recent videos, especially the two-part video called Amateur Seismology Basics, Misconceptions, and Tools. Thank you for your time, and please be humble. Trust me, learning from people around you is a great thing, but in order to do that, you have to be humble and not think you know everything, because guess what? Even Einstein had things that he didn't know, I bet. God bless, and I hope you all stay safe out there, and always be prepared, always. The truth is hate or fear, to those who hate or fear the truth. Ben Ferriolo signing off. I'll see you later.